Open your mind to the world around you. What do you see? What do you feel? Sunset or the earth spinning? Ah, the sun, the source of almost all of our power, nested in one of the brightest places in the universe, a, a galaxy. Yet have you ever looked out on the night sky from within that galaxy? Our galaxy, the Milky Way, even in its brighter places, the universe is still a very black place. In fact, you're within sight of home right now. I've only transported you about one light hour into space. You're still well within our solar system, only out about as far as Jupiter. Probably can't even see home, can you? Probably wouldn't even know it was there. Just think about that. You're practically right on top of Earth in galactic terms, and you could pass it by without even noticing. Let's speed up time a little. Ah, that's better. That's us there, the third rock from the sun, the pale blue dot. Every orbit takes about 365 revolutions, a year of your life. And if you're lucky enough, and with the joys of a technologically advanced civilization, you may circle the sun 100 times or so. But now think back into the deeps of time. The earth and the sun are very effective gravitational wells. Almost nothing leaves. Those molecules which you are currently composed of have been sitting in that gravitational well as long as the earth has been here. And only now, in the impressive instant, do they come alive to look in wonder on the universe. And a mere hundred spins of the sun later, they will dissipate just as they formed. The finite life has such great value in its urgency. The finite life has great purpose, the goal of which should be currently self-evident. Few of the billions who have ever lived have been in the privileged position to see what you are currently seeing. The minds of millions, the minds of a society made this possible, such that what was a paradigm shift for those who lived only a few hundred years ago can now be grasped by children today with some off-the-shelf software. We see further than the mighty thinkers of old, not because we are greater, but because of the inheritance of insight that they bequeathed to us. The knowledge and appreciation we have for the universe is a gift from those who dedicated their lives to understanding. The problem defines itself. We stand on the shoulders of giants, and thereby we see further than they. But in the very act of climbing on their shoulders, we forge anew. We serve the purpose of laying the foundations for those who are to come after us. For those who have seen the flame of knowledge penetrate the murk of the unknown and the wonders that it has revealed, who would not desire to pass in a brighter flame such that those who come to wield this light can greatly supersede our insight, just as our vision penetrates further than those of old? There can be few acts more noble than being part of a society that values, preserves, and increases the knowledge for the minds yet to come. The knowledge before you propounds the value of this theme elegantly. Conversely, there can be few acts more reprehensible than trying to corrupt and distort that knowledge for the selfish and private gratification of a religious minority. Ah, the earth, home to us all, falling through space and time. My, how quickly it appears to fly and how slowly it appears to rotate. It's currently heading away from us at about 30 kilometers per second. Give or take, that's about 100 times the speed of a rifle bullet. That's America there. The sun's just gone down in the eastern United States and the night lights are coming on. That's where and when I'm standing. The sun has just gone down and the planet's rotating. But that's not the direction I'm falling through space. That's beneath my feet. I'm falling faster than the mind can comfortably comprehend. And merely 100 miles above me, less than two hours' drive, is the void of space.
Our position denotes the season, the month. 365 revolutions occur in one orbit. That's one year. The position of the Earth corresponds to July 2008, and something interesting has just happened. Venus has just come out from behind the Sun. I can't see it yet. It's too close to the Sun. But it's there. Top left you have the view that you would see from Earth as the Sun goes down. The evening sky. Lower left you see Venus as you would see from line of sight from the Earth. Venus is currently as far from Earth as it can get, but things are changing. All the planets orbit in a plane and in the same direction, a residue from the accretion disk that our solar system formed from. The closer you get to the Sun, the shorter your orbital period. Venus is catching us up on the inside track. As the days go by, Venus slowly climbs into the evening sky. This takes several months. If you had a telescope, at the moment you would see Venus as a bright and full disk. Whoa, did you see that? Look, Saturn and Mars are dancing over a period of several days. I remember that dance. Venus is catching us up now, while we apparently undertake the outer planets. Look, there's Jupiter, fourth brightest object in the sky. After the, uh, so you've got to bear in mind that the sun is just about down there, right? The sun is illuminating Venus, which is actually fairly nearby, and Jupiter, which is a bloody long way away. So over there we have uh, Venus and Jupiter, setting over Prague. It's time we got a scope on this. Ah, there we go. Venus is coming towards us now at about ten times the speed of a rifle bullet. Yet no one has even started to break a sweat. Venus has now passed its highest point in the sky and is now closing on us fast. And at its closest it appears about six times as big as it did on the far side of the sun. And is visible in almost any optical instrument as a beautiful crescent the size of which is only just not visible with the naked eye. OK, let's do a spot of recording a little more. That, a bit more, a bit more light. That's Venus, which is currently, if I actually adjust the, uh, there we go, that's Venus. So, next time you're outside at sunset, look to the evening sky and look for Venus, and see it as it really is. Feel the Earth spin, and understand the setting sun. Perceive the direction that you're falling through space, towards your feet at sunset, and above your head at sunrise. Thirty kilometers per second. And in your mind's eye, see the movement of Venus as it catches us up on the inside track before undertaking us, and rising into the morning sky all from your vantage point, gravitationally pinned to the surface of the pale blue dot.